You remember last week we installed the plastic frames on the starboard side of our total boat sport dory. We wrapped some ribbands around them there that we ripped out of some cedar and we pulled the frames up against the ribbands with some zip ties and the whole thing worked out really, really well. You know, I've tested that joint that we put uh, between the frames and the bottom right in here and tried to pull some of the frames out of the bottom. I couldn't do it, so I guess it's working out pretty well. Now, I installed the frames here on the port side and uh, this, the next thing I want to do is put some garboard planks around and glue them down onto the bottom. I put these little ribbands right up close to the garboard planks and I did it on purpose because I wanted to train these frames right down out of the way, make sure they didn't foul the back of the garbage when I was gluing the garboard planks onto the bottom right here. Now, on this side here, I've already prepared these planks like I said and I've stacked the two planks up and fit them on there both at the same time already. Now, there's some pretty interesting things about these planks right here. They're both scoffed together right here. One scarf right on top of the other, I suppose, exactly the way everybody in the world would say I'm not supposed to do it, but I have pretty ultimate strength uh, or, or confidence in these scarfs that they'll never let loose, so uh, that's the way I did that. Now, I cut these scarfs and these planks with an electric plane, and I cut them up awful close. I only had to touch them up very, very lightly with a block plane before I glued them together with epoxy glue. Now, believe me, they fit tight. They're never going to come apart, ever. You don't have to worry about those ever again. Now, the other thing I did here was I tapered the thickness of this top plank down by an eighth of an inch down here. That makes this uh, overlap with the next plank a little bit different width, and it works out a little bit better as far as that goes. Cuts a little bit of weight off the boat. That makes this plank considerably lighter, actually. When you pick it up, you can actually feel the difference between this plank and the one beneath it, so that's pretty interesting. So I'm getting ready right now to glue them on there, and uh, the other thing I'd like to say is when I did have them on there, you can see I've got a bunch of holes right here, and they go in between the frames right here. They're going to hold everything together, but I put both layers up there when I did that so that the holes would all line up. I'm going to put the top layer away when I glue the first layer on, but when I do the top layer, I'll have those same exact holes to line up with. So they're all going to line up, and uh, the reason why I'm going to do it that way was that uh, I didn't want to pepper the whole thing full of holes, so I put both layers on, and I put my holes through both layers first. Now I'm only going to glue one layer on, so I'm going to put the second layer away while I do it, but once I pull those fastenings back out, when I go to glue the next layer of planks on, I'll be able to use exactly the same holes all over again because I already made them through the outside layer. So, pretty interesting little uh, procedure right there. So, what do you think? Let's get started. What you see me doing here right now is raising hooks in the back of the plastic frames. And they're raised on there with a hammer and a chisel and they're in a contrary direction to being able to pull along the back of that plank right there so it helps hold them down into the frame socket. Total Boat 5 to 1 epoxy resin is the glue we're going to use. Now that's the old standby and we're using their pumps to meter it out. We're going to use one pump of each no matter how many pumps you use and then we're going to mix it right up in the same cup that we metered it out into. Now, no matter how many times I talk about mixing epoxy glue, I say the same thing. You have to be really careful on how you mix it. You can't just spread it on one side of the cup and call it mixed. You have to mix it up thoroughly. Especially in small amounts like this, you could blow it really quickly. You could spread all the hardener on one side of the cup and have all the glue on the other side of the cup, and that just wouldn't work for you. So you mix it up out in the middle if you can, but once it starts hitting the side of the cup, then you have to get real thorough about it and make sure you do a good job of it. I've removed the second layer or garbage and I flipped the first layer over onto the other side of the boat from where I'm going to apply it and uh, I'm just going to use it and apply glue to the back side of it here where it contacts the stem. Now I can look right at the stem right in front of me right here and see how wide it has to be and I've also drawn a line right there at the leading edge of it so it's pretty cool in here and uh, the glue feels kind of loose but when you spread it on there it doesn't want to run anywhere because it stiffens right up in the cool temperatures. So I'm able to get a fairly generous supply on there without really having any thickeners or anything in it here. And it just lays right there. Now I'm going to spread our total boat epoxy all the way along the garboard plank where it contacts the keel. 
I've already shortened the bristles on my brush there because I just don't want it to feel like you're dragging a dog's tail along there. I can't get the glue spread out the way I want it to work, so I shorten the bristles up nice and short and they become quite a bit stiffer and it works out a lot easier for me. And uh, I've always done it this way. I don't think I'll ever change my mind. So that's what I got to say about brushing it on there. Now, what we're doing here is uh, making quite a strange boat. As I stand here in front of it, looking at it here, uh, you know, we've got a whole bunch of different things going on here. We've got plastic frames and all kinds of different technology, hand tools and all kinds of different things. But the whole idea is to make it all kind of come together and look like something special or something that doesn't strike people as odd in any way or anything like that. Because I'm a traditionalist, basically. But what I'm trying to do here is accomplish a particular task, and that is to make a traditional boat like this, you know, be a pleasure like they've always been and last quite a bit longer than they used to. I'm just finishing up spreading the glue on the plank itself and I'm going to look back here and just make sure there's no big runs or any weak spots or anything like that because I can go back and take care of that right now but there doesn't seem to be so I'm going to move around to the transom here on the port side and go ahead and spread some glue up the transom and uh, we'll just get a nice generous coat on there and then we're going to start applying glue to the side of the bottom. Now going along the side of the bottom here, we're so close to the false bottom right here that you know that in a joint like this, when we pressurize this thing and apply some fastenings to it, that some of the glue is going to come out of there and uh, probably contact between those two surfaces right there. This is where that plastic tape comes into play right here because we just don't want to glue this thing off to the jig. I'm almost done spreading glue all the way along the end of the edge of the keel right there and over those hooks that I cut into the ends of the frames where they hook into the garbage planks down in the frame sockets. Now, that's a pretty interesting little situation right there. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do is just check it out all the way along, make sure I don't have any weak spots. I've got to apply a little bit more glue to the back side of the plank and the stem where they contact each other. And then what I'm going to do is go and get my plank and put it right into position. Now these are some of the holes that I drilled through the two layers. I'm just about to fasten through one layer. I hold that down nice and tight. Now I'm going to do the same thing to a few more up forward here, scattered around through the original holes that I had drilled, and uh, then I'm going to switch over to nailing. Nice. I'm switching over to using nails, and there's a number of reasons why. They're the right length, they've got the right holding power, they're fast for me to use, and I don't want them sticking up through into the inside of the boat because it kind of makes a mess inside the boat. So uh, I didn't have screws the right length. The nails work fine. And the other thing is I'm using these little wedges to put under the nail head. So when I nail the thing down nice and tight, it pulls down against those wedges and holds up tight. Now I'll show you why I'm doing that in a moment. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just push the plank down against that glue that I had split on the transom because I didn't mark it out where the glue belongs. So there, that should mark it right onto the back of the plank. That's just a quick trick to show me exactly where the glue belongs on the back side of the garbage plank. Once I've done that, I can spread a little bit heavier coat of glue on there and then I'm going to use a few screws to hold it up nice and tight up against the transom. Then I'm going to spread out a few more screws here and there and a few more nails and then I'm going to go up forward and make a little bit more of an effort up forward to hold that very, very forward end of the garbage plank down tight against the stem. All right, I've got our port side garbage plank, at least the first layer of it, glued onto the very bottom of the boat. The glue is dry. We did that yesterday. We're just about ready to pull all the nails and screws that held that garbage plank on there. And uh, I've just got a few other things to say about it while I'm here. I mean, that false bottom, the bottom, uh, the garbage plank is right up against that false bottom, just as nice as can be. You can squeeze it right here and feel it, that it's barren right against it. It's exactly what I was trying to do. Of course, that false bottom had a whole ton of different purposes, but uh, it certainly hasn't gotten in the way. It served our purposes. 
I like the whole system. Uh, it's a little slow, this whole system, actually, because we're not looking to pump these boats out one right after another. We don't need 500 of them. All we're building is one. So it doesn't matter if it, uh, if it goes along a little slowly. But what does matter to me is, is that I build a no-fail bottom and no-fail frames in this little dory. And I believe that's what we've got going on here. So I'm just about ready to unfasten it. And uh, I've got a little pair of pliers here. I'm just going to knock the wedges out from under the nails, like so. Now I've just put those wedges under the nail heads like that so that the nail heads would stick up and I would be able to get onto them with a pair of pliers, like so, and pull them out of there. Otherwise, I'd have a time trying to pick them up. And I do have a few screws in it here and there. And uh, we'll just back those out. Now I do have a few more screws left in there as well, so I'm going to go around and take all of those out because I don't need one fastening left in it at all. The plank is holding itself on with epoxy and uh, this is always the way I go with 5 to 1 epoxy glue. Well I've got a little 10 point handsaw here and I'm just about ready to cut the garbage plank off that I've glued on. Now I don't have any marks or any lines or anything on it to aid the cut so I'm going to make a little cut at the top and a little cut at the bottom and then connect those two cuts up with a pencil line on this side and it'll give me a little reference mark. Uh, makes it a little bit safer. So I'm just going to get started right here. quite an angle, so that's cut through to the surface on my side. And I'm just going to cut through again on this side. Yeah. Now I'm going to take a pencil and just connect up those two cuts here. A cut like this is pretty awkward. It's really because you're standing alongside the saw instead of standing right straight behind it. It makes the saw handle travel in a little bit of a funny radius when you're sawing. So you have to be mindful of that when you're sawing. Now I'm going to pick up a block plane and make a number of swipes with that. Now, each time I switch from one tool to another, either from a handsaw to a block plane or from a block plane to who knows what, I really look forward to the sound of the tool because the sounds of the tool really please me. And this block plane is no different. Just listen to the sound of this thing. The next thing for me to do is move up forward and cut the excess plank off up forward. Now, I'm using the same exact handsaw that I used to make that straight cut at the transom, but I'm making a curved cut up forward with it. Now, I'm just kind of using the tip of the saw, really, and twisting it in the cut. As you twist yourself along there, you know, if you twist a little bit too much, you'll be able to jam up a little bit and bind up a little bit, but it's no embarrassment, you know, you just draw back and just keep right on going. You know, you, you, you've got to keep it twisted, otherwise it would just saw right out straight. Cleaning something down like this is always fun for me. I kind of like using a flat tool on a round surface or something contrary to the surface that you've got going on there. It makes it kind of a little bit of a challenge and uh, it really is going along really, really nicely. What I'm out to do here really is to just plane this plank out of the way because there's another plank going by on the other side and we don't want this plank hanging off the bow end of the boat because then the other plank would contact that. You want the other plank to be able to contact the stem exactly the same way this one did. So I'm just planing it down and out of the way. For those of you who think I may have taken a little bit too much off here, I probably have, but I can always put a little bit more back on again. In truth, really, I'm going to add two more layers of goblet plank and a stem cap that goes all the way to the head of the stem. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now I'm going to switch over to an electric plane and I'm going to use that to knock off the excess material on the goblet plank that hangs down below the bottom. Now there's quite a bit of material and it's quite long so you know rather than just struggle at it with a hand plane the electric plane just takes care of matters really really quickly. It's easy and I even like the sound of that to tell you the truth but I don't use it without wearing earplugs because uh, you know it is dangerous for your ears so you may not see the earplugs that I've got in but I've got them in there believe me and uh, I don't want to damage anything. Now as I work my way up close to the seam, I'm going to back off on the adjustment on the electric plane and make longer swipes because that's the only way you can get the contact of the plane down to exactly where you're trying to plane. You have to be really mindful of the adjustment on the planer. If you were adjusted too deeply or you started off with the electric plane hanging off the edge of the material a little bit too much, you could gaff the thing up really terrible. You have to be really, really mindful of how you start your cut off especially when you're starting off with something really narrow like that. Out in the middle of a stroke out in the bottom, it wouldn't be quite the same, but, but the bottom itself is also a problem when you're playing in something like this because it's curved, it's not straight. And the bottom of the plane is straight. We've got that bottom of the plane straight thing here and the material curved again. So, you know, it doesn't want an adjustment. When it can plane this bottom, you could take that plane over and put it on something perfectly flat and it wouldn't even touch the surface whatsoever. So that's how micro adjusted this thing is. And you have to be very, very careful that you know exactly what you're doing with it because you wouldn't want to have gone through all of this work that I've done and end up messing it up with a machine like this. Now I just used a little scraper to scrape off some of the texture that the planer leaves. Now look how nice and flat those look, how nice and tight in there and everything, just the way I wanted it. And believe me, you don't pull those out. There's no mechanical fastenings holding it, but it's staying in there.